In this video, I'm going to talk about Cisco dCloud and show you how you can access Cisco Viral for free with just your web browser. When I went to Cisco Live recently in Barcelona, I met dCloud Steve. dCloud Steve gave us an overview of dCloud and said that we can use equipment for free but there wasn't a practical demonstration of that, so that's what I'm gonna show you here. So the first thing you need to do is go to dcloud.cisco.com, click Login. If you don't have a Cisco account, then create one. Otherwise, log in with your Cisco credentials. It's free to create an account, so simply create an account if you don't have one. But in this example, I already have a Cisco account, so I'm gonna click Login. You then need to choose your data center. I'll make this a bit bigger. In my example, I'm gonna choose EMEA. But as you can see, there's APJ, so Asia, which is currently offline, and various other data centers that you can use, including data centers in the US. I'm gonna click EMEA, but I'm not gonna save my preference. I'm based in the UK, so it makes sense for me to use an EMEA data center. Now, at the moment, no sessions have been scheduled. I'm gonna click Find Content, and I'm simply gonna search for 7,000. And notice this lab, charming the Python on Cisco Nexus 7000 Switch V1. There's also another lab, which is an introduction to NXOS. But I'm gonna choose the first lab, charming the Python on Cisco Nexus. I'm gonna schedule the lab. Now the important thing to note is even though this is a lab about Python, I'm not going to use it for Python. I'm gonna use this lab for CCNA and CCMP labs. Notice I can specify how long I want the lab for. I'm gonna specify a date and time and click next. Primary use case, I'm gonna select this as training. Revenue impact is not applicable. I'm gonna click schedule. So notice it's scheduled, but what I'm gonna do here is this is scheduled in a few minutes. I'm gonna click edit and schedule it from right now and click update. So at the moment, it's 1736 here in the UK. I'm gonna schedule the lab to basically start in the next minute. Okay, so I'm gonna refresh the page. As you can see, it's currently scheduled. Time has just gone 1737. So I'm not gonna bore you waiting for sessions to start. But basically, if you refresh this page, you'll see that the status will change. Notice here it says starting, so session has been started. Now you will get an email about the session, so you can check your email for details about the session. I'm simply getting the session to start immediately. I just need to wait now for it to become available. But while we're waiting for that, notice that dCloud has many labs available. So you can look at dCloud labs, you can look at DevNet labs, you can look at proposal expert services, so in other words, you can filter the labs based on various products. So I'm gonna look at dCloud and DevNet labs. Notice once again, many, many labs are available here. You don't have to do it this way. You could search the catalog for viral. Now, depending on your login, you may have viral labs displayed. Notice that different labs are available. You may have some labs available when you search for viral, such as the Nexus lab that I'm booking at the moment and some others, but you may have no labs displayed. So it really depends on your privilege levels. So your privilege levels determine which labs you can access. So back on my hub, notice the lab is still starting. I'm gonna click download details to see details of this lab. This is a CSV file that opens up you'll be able to view information about your lab. It doesn't really show too much here except the starting and stop date, which are important. But hopefully this lab will become available soon. You do get an email once again when the lab is available. 
you, so you don't have to wait for this to change status. You could wait for the email from dCloud. Okay, so notice now when I refresh the page, the lab is now available. I can click view to view my lab. And notice here are the details of the lab. What's important to note is I haven't installed any software. I'm simply using a browser here. In this example, I'm using Google Chrome. I haven't installed any additional software. But notice when I click the workstation, I can click remote desktop and a new browser tab is opened up and I'm automatically logged in to dCloud. This is using very similar software to what Live Labs is using. I'm gonna start a VM Maestro. This is the interface to Cisco Viral. So notice all I did was schedule a session and then click on the workstation, click remote desktop. The credentials are shown here, but I didn't have to put them in. I was automatically logged in to this Windows PC. This is a Windows 7 computer, but it's running within my web browser. Live Labs once again does something very similar to this. Now they do have some equipment here that you could use if you wanted to, but I'm gonna simply delete these devices because I don't want to use their devices in my topology. What I'm gonna do is go to design and I'm simply gonna add some Cisco iOS devices to the topology. So I'm gonna click on iOS V and then click in the topology to add the device. Scrolling down here, I'm gonna click iOS V layer two and click in the topology. That device is now added. Then I'm gonna click connect and I'm gonna connect the router to the switch. Connect this router to the switch. So I've connected both routers to the switch in this topology. It was as simple as that to connect the devices. Now that may be a bit small, so I'll just zoom in, make it a bit bigger. But notice all I did was add two iOS V routers and an iOS V switch to the topology. I'm gonna click play. I'm told that I need to save my changes. I'm gonna click okay to save them. And I'm gonna go back to simulation mode. So again, all I did was click on design and I added devices to this topology. I could add a, another device to the topology if I wanted to. So add another iOS V router and then click connect and connect that to the switch and get that to start up. So notice I've got three iOS V devices and an iOS V layer two device here. I need to wait for them to start up in this topology. So simply wait for them to boot up. Notice they've gone active now. So what I could do as an example is right click, go Telnet and Telnet to the console of the device. What I'll do actually is just refresh this page to make it clearer. So all I did is refresh the browser. So that's a lot clearer than it was. I'm gonna right click, select Telnet, and, and click console. So I'm gonna to connect to the console of the device. Could do the same with iOS V2, Telnet to the console. I'll do the same with the switch and then I'll connect to the third iOS V router. So I've now connected to multiple devices. Notice I get a prompt. Would I like to enter the initial configuration dialog? I'm gonna say no for the routers. So here's the switch actually. Switch is booted. Here's my second router. So I've got the first router. And what I could do is change the settings in PuTTY. So I'm gonna change the font to let's say 16 to make it bigger, easier to read and apply that. I'll make it slightly smaller 
So let's go for 14 bold and click apply. So there's my first router. Give it a name like R1. Go into the first gigabit port and no shut it. So I'm working on this router here. I'll just move that router a bit closer. So currently working on router one. What I'll do is give the router an IP address of 10.1.1.255.255.255.0. So show IP interface brief. IP address is configured. I'll go into the second router. I'll change the settings in PuTTY. So 14 bold, I think is good enough. So here's router two. Host name, router two, interface gigabit zero zero, no shut, IP address 10.1.1.2. IP address is configured like that. So router two should be able to ping router one through the switch. Switch has a default config, and there you go. Notice router two can ping router one. I could create a loopback here. So let's create a loopback of 2222 slash 32 mask. I'll enable EIGRP, enable it on all networks and disable automatic summarization. I'll do the same on router one. So create a loopback. This just allows me to make the network slightly bigger. So create a loopback of quadruple one. Enable EIGRP, no automatic summarization. Network, enable it on all interfaces. Notice the neighbor relationship is already formed, so ping loopback of router two. I can ping from router one to router two's loopback. The route is in the routing table. So I've got these two routers communicating via the switch using EIGRP. Let's do something similar on the third router. Now notice, everything is running in a web browser. I didn't have to install any software. I didn't have to set up a VPN. All I did was book my session and then connect to the remote desktop through my web browser. This is all running in Chrome. This is very similar once again to Live Labs. Live Labs also allows you to connect to both virtual and physical equipment. So IP address is configured. Let's create a loopback here of quadruple three slash 24 mask. Enable EIGRP network, no order summary. This should form neighbor relationships with router one and router two, which it has. So I should be able to ping the loopback of router one, which I can, and I should be able to ping the loopback of router two, which I can. Routes are shown in the routing table. So router three is able to ping loopback of router one and loopback of router two. It's as simple as that to get a CCNA or CCMP lab working using Cisco dCloud. So there you go, that's a demo of using Cisco dCloud. The advantages of using Cisco dCloud include the fact that it's free, you don't have to pay for access to Cisco dCloud, you're getting access to Cisco viral images running within dCloud without having to pay or try and find Cisco images. So it's a legal solution using Cisco iOS images as part of Cisco Viral for free in a hosted solution. It's hosted by Cisco, so you don't have to have a big server. You don't have to install Cisco Viral. You don't have to try and find the images. You can simply use your web browser and access Cisco dCloud. So once again, notice I am accessing routers. I have access to a switch various devices running within Cisco dCloud available for free. So a great resource. So what do you think? I think this is a great solution. I think it gives us a lot of options. Rather than having to install Cisco Viral locally, you can simply use a free solution in the cloud. You don't have to pay anything for this. You simply schedule access to Cisco dCloud. 
Now that said, you have to schedule access. So access to a lab depends on when it's available. It might not always be available, but don't just try a data center close to you. Consider trying another data center. So as an example, I chose EMEA here, but I could have tried a data center in the US and perhaps got access to more devices or it may have been available for longer. The availability of equipment and the labs that are available to you will often depend on the credentials you have from Cisco. But in this example, I used an account that's not a Cisco partner account. I simply registered an account on Cisco and that's how I accessed Cisco dCloud. So in other words, it's just a standard guest account, no extra privileges, but I was able to access these labs. So hopefully when you try this, you'll be able to access the same labs as I have. Now, if you've enjoyed this video and you found it useful, please like it and please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. If you subscribe to my YouTube channel, it opens up doors for me, allows me to talk to people who wouldn't typically talk to me because the more subscribers I have, the more people want to help me and want to talk to me. So please consider subscribing. I'm David Bombal. I want to wish you all the very best.